So Brian Sivak, you are the Chief Technology Officer of the Department of Health and Human Services at the moment? I am indeed, you and know? Entrepreneur in Residence. Entrepreneur in Residence. So what does that mean? Are you entrepreneuring inside of a gigantic institution? Are you an intrapreneur? What, what's that? I hate the word intrapreneur, but, okay. but uh, we are actually working on transforming the way government works. Uh, we created this new entity called the HHS Idea Lab. Uh, whose mission is, uh, to put it very simply, to create a modern and effective government. So uh, you all have taken some lumps over the last year in terms of transforming the way government works at HHS. You know, uh, Can you give some examples of things that are actually working that people may not have heard of? Sure. So you got to look at it this way. Um, HHS is a massive organization, right? Um, I have this series of slides that I show sometimes where I'll demonstrate how big HHS is by showing a circle with 11 other circles in it. And those are the those represent the 11 operating divisions of HHS, so CDC, uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, FDA, uh, National Institutes of Health, uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services, you know, on and on and on. Uh, and then I'll have a, the next slide is just the National Institutes of Health circle blown up into its own 27 circles, which represent the 27 uh, institutes of the, Nas of the National Institutes of Health. And then I pick another one of those circles, the National Cancer Institute, and blow that up into its own set of 28 circles, just to kind of give a demonstration of exactly how broad and deep this place is. Now, at HHS, uh, we have about 90,000 full-time employees, a bunch of contractors on top of that. Uh, and the crazy thing is that we have a lot of incredibly smart subject matter experts in the various things that we do. And that's everything from refugee resettlement to uh, running the largest insurance company in the world to uh, looking for the cure, the cure for cancer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what we've realized is that within these 90,000 people, there are uh, you know, thousands and thousands of people who just have amazing ideas and who have really interesting concepts that they need to test. They just don't know how to do it. And so what the Idea Lab does, in uh, one of the things that the Idea Lab is there to do is to allow these people uh, both the freedom uh, and the flexibility and the resources and the methodologies that they need in order to test out some of those ideas. So can you give me, say, three examples of ideas that have been drawn from that huge mass of employees that have been implemented that lead to sure. something innovative or innovation itself? So yeah, although I hate the word innovation, so let's just... <laughs> well, I mean, the, the simple version of that is taking existing product, service, some function, and enabling it to happen more fast, sure. uh, more right. cheaply, whatever. You know, so I'll give, you a, a, I'll give you a great example. Um, so at the Administration for Children and Families, one of the things that, uh, or ACF, one of the things that ACF does is uh, administer state-based child welfare programs. So child welfare programs are run by states, but we fund a large portion of those programs across the United States. Uh, for decades, probably, uh, states have been required as a component of us giving them this money to run these programs to come back to us with some data or statistics about how those dollars are being spent and how those programs are being run. Uh, ACF, centrally, will then take that data and put it into literally a Word document and, you know, tables in a Word document and hand that back to the states in order to say, here's, you know, a summary of your statistics, use this to manage your program. Not very useful. Now, um, one of the uh, ACF employees, actually this team of ACF employees, had a pretty good idea, uh, which was they said, look, there are all these data visualization tools out there. Why can't we take the data that we're getting, put it into a dashboard or some other electronic format that allows us to slice and dice data, to drill down on, on different pieces of information, and then provide that to the states to see if they can manage their program. So they applied to one of the Idea Lab programs called the uh, Ignite program, HHS Ignite. And the easiest way to think of that is that it's uh, essentially just like a little internal incubator where we give people a, a little bit of time, three months, a little bit of money, $5,000, and more importantly, a methodology, a way to actually go about uh, developing and testing uh, and implementing an idea on a prototype basis to see if we can get it to a successful point, which can then be scaled. So they went through this process, uh, ended up teaching themselves how to build a uh, dashboard in this one tool, and but m more importantly, the methodology that we like to um, espouse very specifically states that we need people to get out there and get with their customers and get with their users. So they spent a lot of time uh, with the state-based users of the system, developing it and designing it. 
So when they were done, they had actually created something that for the first time ever really lets these states manage their programs in an incredibly effective way. What are two other quick examples that you can give? Uh, uh, two other super quick examples. We have a program called HHS Entrepreneurs, which brings people in from the outside world to work on what we consider to be fairly complex problems inside that we don't have the skill sets to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, so one great project there was um, around fixing the organ or, or making the organ don organ donation and transplant system a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, the folks who run the um, uh, this network within HHS thought that there was a problem with uh, being able to sort of electronically tag and track organs as they were procured from a donor and then transported and transplanted into a recipient. Uh, so we brought in somebody from UPS who has a, um, a, a lot of experience with um, uh, you know tagging and tracking and supply chain and all that kind of stuff. And um, it was great because he came in thinking that the solution was going to be RFID tagging a box of organs and tracking that through to the recipient, but it turned out that the problem was much farther upstream and his lean training had actually helped him uh, realize that he needed to spend time in the operating room looking at this stuff. So we watched a whole bunch of procedures and realized that the right solution was actually to create a mobile labeling solution that because every time a uh, operating team went in to uh, procure a bunch of organs, they would have to literally rewrite the labels. Uh, like. I think it's something like 30 to 70 times, and this is literally black sharpies writing long strings of letters and characters on sticky labels over and over and over again. The other cool thing about that is um, every minute is important when you're talking about organs, right? Because organs only live for so long. So that's another example. Mm -hmm. um, for, uh, and for people who might want to see the examples of this online for themselves, you know, uh, where yeah. should they go? What's the uh, it's the Idea Lab website, so it's http www.hhs.gov/idealab. All one word.